How do we find the perimeter of a rhombus when given the diagonals? This type of problem can quickly be solved if we remember a few things about rhombuses. When doing geometry, it's really important to remember your definitions. The first thing we want to remember is the definition of rhombus. A rhombus is an equilateral parallelogram. This means that it's a quadrilateral whose opposite sides are parallel to each other, and being equilateral just means that all four of its sides are congruent. So that's what a rhombus is, and since it's equilateral, we might say that all of its sides have a length of s, and write that here in our diagram. Then of course, what we're looking for, the perimeter of the rhombus, is four times s, because there are four sides, all of length s, making up the rhombus. Thus, in order to find the perimeter, all we need to do is use the diagonal lengths of the rhombus to calculate the side length s. Multiply that by 4 and we'll have our perimeter. But how can we use the diagonals of the parallelogram to calculate the side length? Well, since a rhombus is by definition a parallelogram, its diagonals bisect each other, which means they basically cut each other in half. In this case, it was made clear that the diagonals bisect each other based on the diagram. However, knowing that the diagonals bisect each other would have allowed us to conclude if we were given that the orange diagonal had a length of 14, for example, we could conclude that these two pieces have a length of 7, since the diagonals bisect each other. Similarly, if we were just given that this whole yellow diagonal had a length of 48, since diagonals bisect each other in a parallelogram, like a rhombus, we would know that each of these pieces are half the total, so they're each 24. Now, since we know these diagonals bisect each other, we can make our final conclusion that will lead us to our answer very quickly. Consider these two triangles. They are congruent by side, side, side. This is congruent to this, this is congruent to itself, and these sides are congruent. So these two triangles are congruent. Also, these two angles are supplementary. Since they're supplementary and congruent, these are both right angles. They have a measure of 90 degrees. And so we've just proven our last important fact that the diagonals of a rhombus are perpendicular. They intersect at a right angle. That's important because that means this is a right triangle, and in fact all of these are right triangles. So we can apply the Pythagorean theorem to any of these four congruent right triangles in order to solve for the hypotenuse, which is that side length. So, applying the Pythagorean theorem to this right triangle here, the Pythagorean theorem says that the sum of the squares of the leg lengths of a right triangle, that's the sum of the squares of the leg lengths, in this case, 7 squared plus 24 squared, is equal to the square of the hypotenuse, so in this case, s squared. 7 squared is 49, 24 squared is 576, and 49 plus 576 is 625, so s squared is equal to 625. Then we can take the square root on both sides of this equation in order to solve for s, the side length of our rhombus. The square root of 625 is 25, and of course the square root of s squared is s, so the side length of our rhombus is 25. Since all four of the sides are congruent, like we said before, the perimeter of our rhombus is four times the side length. So in this case, that's four times 25, which is, of course, 100. So the perimeter of our rhombus is 100. So let's go through it again quickly. How do we find the perimeter of a rhombus given the diagonals? Well, the diagonals of a rhombus bisect each other. So if you're given the full length of the diagonals, make sure you notice that each of these pieces is half of their respective diagonals. 
Again, we might have been given that this diagonal had a length of 14. Then we could conclude that this piece is half of 14 and this piece is half of 14. Then remember that the diagonals of a rhombus are perpendicular. So the diagonals actually cut a rhombus into four congruent right triangles. Applying the Pythagorean theorem to any of those right triangles will allow us to solve for a side length. But since a rhombus is equilateral, all of its side lengths are the same. So you can pick any of these right triangles you want, apply the Pythagorean theorem to solve for the side length, and since a rhombus has four sides, multiply that side length by four, that's the perimeter. And I always like to remind people that the numbers aren't always going to work out quite this nicely, and it's totally fine if they don't. Don't let that intimidate you. Let's quickly go through another example here just to see where the numbers don't work out quite as nicely, but it's no problem. Here we're given that the diagonals have lengths of 16 and 26. Remember, the diagonals bisect each other, so we know that these two pieces are both half of 16, so they both have a length of 8. Similarly, these two pieces are both half of 26, since the diagonals bisect each other. So this is 13, and this other piece is 13. Then, to solve for the side length, we apply the Pythagorean theorem. The sum of the squares of the legs of the right triangle, so 8 squared plus 13 squared, is equal to the square of the hypotenuse, which is our side length. 8 squared is 64, 13 squared is 169, 64 plus 169 is 233, so S squared is equal to 233, and we take the square root of both sides to solve for S, giving us that S is equal to the square root of 233. Then remember, we're trying to find the perimeter, which consists of four sides, so that's four times the side length that we just solved for. So that's four times the square root of 233. And this cannot be simplified any further, so we could leave our answer in this exact form, or plug it into a calculator and see that this is approximately 61.06. And that's how you find the perimeter of a rhombus when given the diagonals. Since me spinning on and on, spinning